in this video we're going to be looking at topic 4G esters and this is in the triple chemistry outcomes for IGCSE from Edexcel. So we're going to be looking at the functional group of esters and looking specifically at ethylethanoate and how this is formed. We're looking at how to write the structural and displayed formula of some esters and how we can name them and also about what we use them for and there is a practical in here as well that you'll most likely carry out with your teacher. So esters are another homologous series of compounds so this is the fifth homologous series that we've met. We've looked at alkanes, alkenes, alcohols, carboxylic acids and now esters. Of course again these are not hydrocarbons because they do contain oxygen and they contain this COO functional group. So we have the carbon double bonded to an oxygen and then the carbon is bonded to another oxygen and you can see that there are extension bonds on both ends which means that this will tend to be in the middle or towards the centre of the molecule. It doesn't have to be dead centre because we don't necessarily have equal numbers of carbons on either side but you will never find an ester group at the end of a carbon chain. It will always be in the centre. And we can form esters by reacting an alcohol and a carboxylic acid in warm conditions in the presence of a catalyst, which is concentrated sulfuric acid or H2SO4. So we're going to start off by looking at how we actually make esters and this is likely an experiment that you will carry out in your lessons with your teacher because it is quite simple and you'll probably do it on a small scale. So esters are formed by a reaction known as esterification and we use, as we've said, an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. Sometimes the reaction can also be called a condensation reaction. And the reason for this is because we form water when these two molecules join together. This is a reversible reaction. So we can go from the alcohol and carboxylic acid to the ester and water, or we can go back the way. And we're going to look at both sets of reactions. And because it is reversible, if we had a sealed container, we could reach an equilibrium. Now you will have covered equilibrium in topic 3c so you might want to look back on that if you're not too sure about equilibrium and what it actually means but in this case this reaction is reversible and what we want to do to make sure we get the best yield is we're going to use pure ethanol and pure ethanoic acid. So this is how it works. The first step is to take your mixture of your ethanol and your ethanoic acid, just small amounts, and then you add a couple of drops of the concentrated sulfuric acid. That acts as the catalyst because this reaction is very slow at room temperature and it's even slow when we put it into hot water, but we're still going to put it into the hot water to help speed it up. And we leave it in there for about maybe 10 to 15 minutes just to allow the reaction to start to make some of the ester and reach a point of equilibrium. We then move to the second step where we empty the test tube with our mixture onto a solution of cold sodium carbonate or sometimes you might use sodium hydrogen carbonate. It just depends on the, uh, the chemicals that you have available. And what will happen is you'll start to see some bubbles and eventually the bubbles will stop and you will see this thin layer of an oily liquid on top of the surface and that is your ester. And the ester is not soluble in the substance or in the sodium carbonate solution or any aqueous solution. So it stays on the top of it and it just floats and that you can then smell the ester. Esters have a very sweet smell and we're going to discuss some of the uses of them later on. So remember the catalyst of the concentrated sulfuric acid doesn't actually take part in the reaction. It is simply there to help move the reaction along. So it's not going to be included in our equation. So our equation is going to look like this. We have the ethanoic acid, CH3COOH, plus ethanol, CH3CH2OH. And both of them have a liquid state symbol because these are not solutions. They are pure ethanoic acid and ethanol. They are then going to have this reversible reaction. 
So remember, we use a double-headed arrow, and that's going to form this ethyl ethanoate, and this is your ester. And we'll talk about where that name comes from in just a few minutes. So we have CH3COO, so there's our ester functional group, CH2, CH3, and again, this is a liquid, not got any water here um, in terms of the forming a solution, uh, but we do form some water, of course, in the reaction, but it doesn't dissolve the ethyl ethanoate, so it's not aqueous, it is just simply liquids for all the state symbols. The sodium hydrogen carbonate and the second part, whether it's sodium hydrogen carbonate or just sodium carbonate, is used to neutralize any remaining acid. So remember, this is an equilibrium, so we're not necessarily going to be reacting all of the ethanoic acid. So this base of the sodium hydrogen carbonate is going to neutralize that because we don't want to have any acid in our ester mixture and of course we also use an acid as our catalyst so we have to neutralize that as well and because the ester is not soluble in water it's going to float on top as an oily layer and then you would be able to extract that using various different methods that we don't need to know for IGCSE but we can easily separate the ester and then it's be used for lots of different applications so now we want to look at how we actually draw out the structure of an ester, because this is very important and you could be asked to draw a structure in an exam. So what happens is we draw out our alcohol and our carboxylic acid, and we want to make sure that the two functional groups, when we draw them, are side by side. So you can see that we have the ethanol functional group on the right-hand side of the molecule and the carboxylic acid functional group on the left-hand side of the molecule. And what we do is we remove water here. So we remove an OH from the ethanoic acid and an H from the alcohol. So we're removing this section here. And once this is removed, this oxygen here is going to join up with this carbon and then it is going to form our ester group. And you can see that we have this COOH. When you draw the ester, you should always draw the acid first, followed by the alcohol. Now, it's not wrong to draw it the way it's shown in the diagram here, where we have the alcohol first and the, then the acid, but the best practice is always to draw the acid first. But you won't lose marks in the exam, because in the IGCSE textbook, they draw the alcohol first. So either one is perfectly acceptable. And of course, we also have our one mole of water being formed as well. So let's practice drawing out some of these esters. So we're getting some combinations and we want to draw what we're going to form. So the best thing to do is to draw out your two starting molecules. So we have methanol and propanoic acid. Now we want to draw the acid, then the alcohol, because that's the way our structure should be. So we have propanoic acid, so that's three carbons in a row with all of my hydrogens of course and then we have methanol so that's one carbon with its OH and then its hydrogens and we're going to be losing this section here and that is then going to leave us with our acid section with our double bond to our oxygen so we've removed this OH, that is then going to bond into the oxygen from the methanol and that leaves me then just to fill in the rest of the carbons and hydrogens. And that is our ester being formed. We'll look at how we name this in just a few minutes. So let's try the second one. We've got propanol and ethanoic acid this time. So we draw our two carbons for ethanoic acid with our carboxyl group. And then for propanol, we have three carbons this time, again, with all of our hydrogens, making it very clear where each of the bonds are coming from. I'm then losing this water, and then this is going to form my, um, sorry, my carboxylic acid section, and then my alcohol section.
And again, that's how we draw out our acids. And of course, we're going to have plus H2O in both of them. But if you're just asked to draw out the structure of the acids, you don't have to write the H2O. But you could be asked to draw out the equation with the full displayed formula for each of them. And it would look something like this, of course, drawing out the water as it is correctly bonded. But the most important part is you draw your acid, then your alcohol, and then you lose your water molecule. And then those two things join together to form our two esters here. So now we want to look at how we name an ester. Now an ester's name can look quite difficult at first. So this is an example where we have butyl propanoate. But actually all we have to do is we just break it down into small sections. So the butyl part, the first part of the ester name, comes from the alcohol. So we take the name of the alcohol, for example, butanol, and we take away the anol part and we replace it with YL. So my butyl tells me that I have a four carbon alcohol. The prop and propanoate refers to the carboxylic acid. So the prop here tells me that I have a three carbon carboxylic acid. The AN tells us it's still saturated. There are no double bonds here apart from the carbonyl, which is the C double bonded to the oxygen, but we have no carbon to carbon double bonds. And then the O8 is the ending for an ester and that tells us that we have this COO functional group. So we have the alcohol part, the acid part, and then the ending is always anoate. So let's try out some examples and have a look at some in more detail. So if we've got methanol and propanoic acid, we take the meth, we get rid of the anol, we take the prop, and we get rid of the anoic acid, and then it becomes methyl prop anoate, or methyl propanoate. For ethanol and ethanoic acid, we do the same thing, and we get ethyl ethanoate. And for propanol and methanoic acid, we get propyl methanoate. Now we're going to look at how we split up esters. So remember that we said that this is a reversible reaction. We can go from the alcohol and carboxylic acid to the ester and water, but we can also go back the way because it is reversible. So the condensation reaction that we use to make it can be reversed by adding water. So we have the water here. If that adds back into the ester, we are then going to split the ester back into the carboxylic acid and the alcohol. And this is known as hydrolysis. So going forward, the reaction is condensation, which is the removal of water. And going backwards, it is hydrolysis. And that is the addition of water to split a molecule. So you can see here that we are going to split the ester down the center and your H2O is going to split into your hydrogen and your OH. And they're going to add back on to your alcohol and your carboxylic acid and you're going to reform the ethanol and the ethanoic acid from ethyl ethanoate. So that is the opposite in this case of the condensation reaction. So we're going back the way in our reversible. Now small esters like ethyl ethanoate tend to be used in things like solvents. Majority of esters, however, are very sweet and they actually have a nice fruity smell. And we typically find that they are also very volatile, meaning they evaporate easily. And because they evaporate easily, they're actually used very commonly in perfumes because they are going to not stay on the skin for too long and keep the skin wet, but they still have this nice, flavorful, fruity smelling. Um, and we can also use them as flavourings as well. And the flavourings with smells such as bananas, raspberries and pears, these are actually formed using esters. So this diagram here is a very good diagram just to give you an idea of the types of smells. Now you're not expected to memorise this, it is just for your own information. So if you wanted to make a an ester to be used to give a banana smell, you might want to use this one here, which is using pentanol as your alcohol and 
ethanoic acid. So you get pentyl ethanoate. And that ester has the smell of bananas. You may wish to use, for example, um, an apple smell. And again, you can use pentyl, but this time we're going to use pentanoate or pentanoic acid to give us pentyl pentanoate. The one that most commonly is used is ethyl ethanoate, and that's actually used in PVA glue to give the glue that distinctive smell. And we can get lots of different smells for esters. Some of them are nicer than others, and some of them, it just depends on what you want to use it for. Now, when we're looking at past paper questions, similar to carboxylic acids, what you will find is that there are no questions in the old specification for esters. It is new to the IGCSE 9 to 1 specification. So you may need to look for questions from A level or ask your teacher to source you some questions if you want to practice this. What I've done here is I've taken a past paper question from a sample paper that was produced for the 9 to 1 course. So this is only a two marker and it's really all we have at the moment. But the more exams we do, the more past paper questions will become available. So we've got the formula of an ester shown here and we want to deduce the name of the carboxylic acid and the alcohol that will react to form this ester. So we have our ester functional group in the center and we know that that's the joining point for these two molecules. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split that down the center. This part here is going to be the acid because it has our C double bond O and this part here is going to be our alcohol. And now it's just a case of counting. So for the acid, I've got one, two, three carbons. So my carboxylic acid has to be propanoic acid. And for my alcohol, I've got one, two, three, four carbons. And notice that the OH is going to be on carbon number one. So this alcohol is butan one all. And that's where you get your two marks from. And you can see in the mark scheme, they would also accept just simply butanol as the answer. Now that's everything for topic 4G esters. It's not particularly long. It's just a case of practicing out drawing and naming esters and make sure that you do know the steps for the practical in order to prepare an ester, because that is a common exam question. And remember to check with your teacher for any past paper questions because you will not find them in the old specification. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and we hope to see you back on the channel soon.